Our next finalist says he loves being silly, which I guess is necessary when you study astrophysics. <laughs> uh, representing the east of England, please give it up for Richard Dyer! There are places in this universe where time stands still. But how is that possible? 100 years ago, Einstein changed how we think about gravity forever. He said that gravity is fundamentally linked to a combination of space and time that we call space-time. wonder how they came up with that name. <laughs> he said that wherever there's gravity, space-time will be curved and warped, meaning the flow of time is not constant throughout the universe. Pretty weird. Let me give you an example. Those of you at the top of the theater, you are slightly higher up. Therefore, Earth's gravitational field is slightly weaker. Space-time is warped slightly less. And so from our perspective down here, time moves slightly faster for you. And yet from your perspective up there, you actually see our clocks running more slowly. That means you are aging faster than we are down here. <laughs> and it shows. <laughs> Don't worry. The difference between a clock speed up there and down here is far too small for us to feel. To really see time move differently, we need to travel 26,670 light years to the center of our galaxy. There we find a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A star. This is a place where space-time is warped like nothing else in the galaxy. So hopefully now you understand the gravity of the situation. <laughs> As you stare into this cosmic titan, I begin to fall in. When I'm one meter away from the black hole, I wave at you like this. For me, that feels like a normal wave and lasts about a second. But from your perspective, that single wave takes an entire day. And then, I hit the black hole. Time stops entirely, and I remain frozen forever. Black holes are one of the most extreme demonstrations that time is not fixed throughout the universe. And yet what unifies us is that we feel our own time ticking at one second per second. And we have a choice about how to spend each fleeting moment. For me, I want to understand black holes and the tricks they play with space, time, and gravity from the origins of our universe right down to the smallest constituents that make us. We will find answers in these beautiful, mysterious places where time stands still. Thank you. Give it up for Richard Dyer, everybody! Okay, let's face some questions. Okay. Uh, who's up first? John? Yeah. So, nice. <laughs> <laughs> the humor. Sorry, guys, at the top. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's nothing against you. Um, so, so, yeah, so uh, obviously you're talking about space time. And like when people think of space time and they think of Einstein and they think, whoa, that's way yeah. over my head. That's something I can't. And so, when you set about producing this talk right now, did you think that humor would be a good way to put it across, or did you think that use of analogies, did you have a, a, a game plan? What was your game plan to communicate to this particular audience? I think for me, the one thing that I've realized studying physics is I need to be able to see something in my mind's eye. You know, maths equations are great, they're brilliant, but there needs to be a, a link, a conceptual link to something in, in the real world. Um, and so, to some extent, you know, space-time, there is a bit of intuition there. It's, you, you might have seen this, you might have seen images or, or other demos. You can imagine a big rubber sheet, you put something heavy on it, and it bends it downwards. And that's, that's kind of analogous to space-time, although space-time's in four dimensions, so it takes a bit of abstracting from <laughs> a two-dimensional sheet. Um, so I think that's a factor. And then, yeah, I think there's always, there's always room to be a bit silly, like, a, like I put in my bio. So, yeah, a few jokes here and there. It never hurts, yeah. Nice. Uh, Maggie, do you have any questions or comments? Well, actually, it was that use of humour. Do you think it is an effective tool? Because, um, um, as people say, it's sort of, it can be daunting. Do you think it breaks the ice? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> that was very simple. <laughs> well, I love it. I love someone who is very much smarter than me, but also a silly Billy. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> right, please give it up for Richard Dyer!